It's lovely to see you. So I must remember everything is recorded. I don't like being recorded, but here we are. So can I see everybody? Who are you? Ah, here we are. It's so lovely to see you all again, those who I've seen before. Oh, it's lovely. So here we are, Monday evening. It's a day I know well, because I taught this class before the pandemic, I mean, a few years ago, and a special day for <clears throat> bringing the mind in a place that is conducive to be, um, you know, to nurture your interest in Buddhism. <laughs> we have many situations that do not necessarily nurture <laughs> the quality of the mind that is interested in Dhamma, not because of any of our fault, but just because life is, you know, varied, varied, so, uh, I, yeah, as usual, uh, we can, um, I can give you the, the five precepts, yeah? Carola is here. Hi, Carola. We can give you the, I can give you the five precepts and um, you'll, go, you'll get some help to get all the text and so on. Wangu, are you? Oh, yeah, here you are. There you are. Yeah, so you will see in front in, on your computer where the precepts are and the text that you will be chanting. So we'll be on page. Um, so it's on first one is on page 26, 26 at the bottom. Wangu, that's right, 26, and that's the bottom. I give you the precepts so. We have a great variety of people can give, who can give the precept. So at the, tonight you are a group of people and you get the precept from a nun. So you have to remember at some point when you say at the end, Bante, or, or at the beginning as well, uh, you don't say it, you say Aye, Aye, which means a nun, okay? Mayam Aye. Now, uh, Imogen, are you going to, request a precept for everyone, on behalf of everybody? Yes. Okay, please. So I just want to say maybe for those who are new to this class that taking the precepts in the Buddhist teaching right now is not, you know, for the class right now, is not compulsory, okay? Uh, you're not forced into adhering to a standard of ethical standard or, you know, code of behavior, deportment, and so on. You don't, you're not forced into this, but it's for you um, to, I, I'll talk more about the precept later on, but it's for you to, you can try it out, see what it does to you when you take the five precepts. Maybe you can, might be very interested in those intention that those five precepts are generating in your heart. Maybe you say, oh my God, this is too much for me. I can't do that. I swear I do this, I do that. I drink, I smoke, I do <laughs> What can I say? I can't take the precept. You can just take the precept for the evening. How about that? Or you can take the precept for three years. It's up to you. <laughs> so they are not bound by time. You know, in the, when you, you give it, you, you take it yourself. So because you're interested and you're not bound by those precepts, you know, you, it's up to you. You can just create a limit until maybe the evening or until the next morning or, until, or longer, you know, you can see whether it's a, a useful um, aspect of the Buddhist teaching that helps to transform unskillful habits or help to make you more aware of unskillful habits and more kind and patient with yourself when you can't actually get it right, right? So 
that the kind of thing that is precept. We, we take the nuns and the monks, we take the precepts, our own precept every fortnight. I mean, so that we, re, we, we renew our precepts, um, you know, our interest in take, uh, living by the standard of the precepts. And um, it's not just lines, you know, that you recite sort of, um, you know, by heart. They are profound intention to bring into your life a quality of um, goodness, you would say, a quality of health, health of the heart mind, which of course affects the body mind also, you know, the body. So health of the mind always have a good effect on the health of the body. So, <clears throat> Imogen, is, is it Imogen or Imogen? Imogen. Imogen. So Imogen, you can start, um, you can explain to them that if when they follow you and when they don't, or when they follow me or when they don't, huh? okay? Okay. With this one, I'll just start on my own. Maya maya tisara nena saha pancha silani achama dutiam pi maya maya tisara nena saha pancha silani achama dutiam pi maya maya tisara nena saha pancha silani achama Okay, <coughs> so now. You continue on page, um, the next page, right? I, I recite the refuges, okay? And first of all, I recite the, <clears throat> all right? So I do this chant, which I'm going to do now three times. And then after that, you do it three times yourself. Namu tasa bhagavato arahato samma sambutasa. Namu tasa bhagavato arahato samma sambutasa. Namu tasa bhagavato arahato samma sambutasa. Please, you can do the same yourself, even though it's not in the book. Okay. Namo tasa bhagavato arahato sama sambudasa. Namo tasa bhagavato arahato sama sambudasa. Namo tasa bhagavato arahato sama sambudasa. And then now you repeat. Every line after after the line I chant, you repeat the same thing. <clears throat> Pudham saranam gachami. Pudham saranam gachami. Dhammam saranam gachami. Dhammam saranam gachami. Sangham saranam gachami. Sangham saranam gachami. Dutti yampi buddham saranam gachami. Dutti yampi buddham saranam gachami. Dutti yampi dhammam saranam gachami. Dutti yampi dhammam saranam gachami. Dutti yampi sangham saranam gachami. Dutti yampi sangham saranam gachami. Tatiampi buddham saranam gachami. Tatiampi buddham saranam gachami. Tatiampi dhammam saranam gachami. Tatiampi dhammam saranam gachami. Tatiampi sangham saranam gachami. Tatiampi sangham saranam gachami. Ti sarana gamanani tritang, and you say, Ama Aye. Ama Aye. Okay. So the chant I did on my own, okay, was this completes the going to the three refuges. And the last chant that you were doing, going to, you did was, yes, Venerable Sister. That's all. You just, I, you know, agree with what I, what was said. Now we 
are going to start um, reciting the five precepts, okay? And you repeat after me. So I'll do it in Pali and you repeat after me in Pali. And then you do it in English and I don't need to repeat that. Yeah, you can just do it on your own in English. All right. Parati pata veratmani sika padam samadhyami. Anati pata veratmani sika padam samadhyami. When to take the precept to refrain from taking the life of any living creature. Adina dama veratmani sika padam samadhyami. I undertake the precept to refrain from taking that which is not given. Kame sumi chachara viratmani sika padam samadhyami. Kame sumi chachara viratmani sika padam samadhyami. I undertake the precept to refrain from taking this conduct. Musa wada veratmani sika padam samadhyami. Musa wada veratmani sika padam samadhyami. I undertake the precept to refrain from lying. Sura meraya majapamadatana veratmani sika padam samadhyami. Sura meraya majapamadatana. Paramani Sikapadam Samadhyami. I undertake the precept to refrain from consuming intoxicating drink and drugs which lead to carelessness. Imani Pancha Sikapadani Samadhyami. Silena Sugatinyanti, Silena Boga Sampada, Silena Nibutinyanti, Tasama, Silam Wisotaye. And you say Sadhu, Sadhu, Sadhu. Sadhu, sadhu. Sadhu, sadhu, sadhu is translated sometimes as well said, well said, well said. It's a traditional Eastern um, way of saying that I agree to what I've been saying, you know. So now we're going to do the chanting on page two. It is a, a traditional chant we do every morning. When, we, when the meditation is on, at the moment in the morning, we do our meditation on our own. <clears throat> so, <clears throat> have you got that? The dedication of offerings, that's right. All right. Yoso Bhagavaraham Samma Sambodha to the blessed one, the Lord, the fully attained, perfect enlightenment. Sawakato ye na bhagavata dhammo. To the teaching which he expanded so well. Supatipanno ya sa bhagavato sa and to the blessed one's disciples who have practiced well. Tamayam bhagavantam sadhammam tasangam. To thee, the Buddha, the Dhamma, and the Sangha. Ime hisakare hiyataraham. Aro pite yabi pujayama. We render with offerings our rightful homage. Sadhu no bante bhagava suchira parini butopim. It is well for us to blessed one having attained liberation. Pachima janata dukam pamanasam still had compassion for later generations. Ime sakare dugatapana karabute patigan hatum. May these simple offerings be accepted. 
Amha kandi garata hitaya sukayam for our long lasting benefit and for the happiness it gives us. Araham Samma Sambudho Bhagavan The Lord, the perfectly enlightened and blessed one Buddha Bhagavan Habivate Mi I render homage to the Buddha, the blessed one We bow Swakato Bhagavata Dhammu, the teachings so completely explained by him. Dhamma Namasami, I bow to the Dhamma. Supatipanno Bhagavato Sawakasango. The blessed one's disciples who have practiced well. Sangha Namami, I bow to the Sangha. <clears throat> Andamayam Buddha Sabhagavato Pubhavagana Makaram Karoma Sem. <clears throat> now let us pay preliminary homage to the Buddha. Namo tassa bhagavato arahato samma sambhutasa Namo tassa bhagavato arahato samma sambhutasa Namo tassa bhagavato arahato samma sambhutasa Homage to the blessed, noble, and perfectly enlightened one. Homage to the blessed, noble, and perfectly enlightened one. Homage to the blessed, noble, and perfectly enlightened one. Okay, and now. We'll do the chant on page 43. <clears throat> now let us may the four boundless qualities shine forth. I will abide pervading warmth water with a mind, with a heart imbued with loving kindness. Likewise the second, likewise the third, likewise the fourth. So above and below, around and everywhere, and to all as to myself, I will abide pervading the all encompassing world with a heart imbued with loving kindness, abundant, exalted, immeasurable, without fear. <clears throat> Without, Ill, without hostility and without ill will, I will abide pervading one quarter with a heart imbued with compassion. Likewise the second, likewise the third, likewise the fourth, so above and below, around and everywhere, and to all as to myself. I will abide pervading the all encompassing world with a mind imbued with compassion, abundant, exalted, immeasurable, without hostility and without his will, ill will. I will abide pervading one quarter with a heart imbued with gladness. Likewise the second, likewise the third, likewise the fourth, so above and below, around and everywhere, and to all as to myself, I will abide pervading the all-encompassing world with a heart imbued with gladness, abundant, exalted, immeasurable, Without hostility and without your will, 
I will abide fervent in one quarter, with a heart imbued with equanimity. Likewise the second, likewise the third, likewise the fourth, so above and below, around and everywhere, and to all as to myself. I will abide pervading the all-encompassing world with a heart imbued with equanimity, abundant, exalted, immeasurable, without hostility and without ill will. So we'll stop now and we'll give another chant later on. And we go on to the practice of meditation for about half an hour. So we can, um, we don't need a chanting book anymore, Wangu, that's right. And sit comfortably, right? Sit comfortably so that you can actually remain in that posture for a certain time. It is now five to seven, so we'll do the meditation for about half an hour. So just spend the next few minutes noticing the way your body is feeling in this posture, which you are going to keep for half an hour. So make sure you're comfortable enough to not be, to not increase any tension or any, aggravate any pain you already have. Make sure that you feel well supported in your posture. So you don't need to think about it right now, you just, you are aware of the body sitting. Make sure your neck is in line with your spine, so you're not, you don't have a chin to lift it up on the front. The chin is slightly tucked in. And assuming that you are in a space where there is a certain amount of silence, you can just feel the silence around you as you stop your daily activities for to sit quietly. Noticing if you have any project already related to your meditation practice. I'm going to do this, I should not have that. Notice the agendas that we carry around in the simple fact of being aware of sitting. We may have all kinds of plans, all kinds of expectations that usually end in disappointment. So our meditation can be a you know, course running through the silent mind, trying to get something you want, something you desire, something you expect and so on. So right now, just tell yourself, I'm dropping everything. Just here and now. 
with nothing to do, nowhere to go, don't have to become anything, you don't even have to become a good meditator, don't worry about this, it happened by itself. You don't have to do anything, just keep a good posture, that's enough. And then the rest, trust in the awareness of the present moment. This is a time for you to really check the power of awareness, the power of mindfulness. Your body can readjust itself, not by you doing anything, but because you're aware of maybe a bad posture. Your thoughts can calm down because you decide that you don't need to sort them out. Let them be and they go. So one needs to remind the mind, there's nowhere to go, nothing to do right now, because it keeps forgetting. And if you don't have a plan from our, for your outside life, life, it will create a plan for your meditation. So you are aware of that tendency of the mind to get into something to do. Instead of just dropping, you drop by the fact that you're aware. Awareness is a place where non-attachment takes place. When you are aware and mindful. Then many of you probably have already meditated in the past and you have maybe a, a, an object of meditation which is particularly well adapted to your to what brings peace in you. So you can use that for a little while. You know, a great aspect of the great part of the meditation before we get into vipassana and so on is just to allow the mind to calm down to disengage itself from the activity of our life. To empty the mind from, to let the mind be as it is. It doesn't have to be in a particular way. You just notice the way it is now. It's all you have to do. And you remind the mind let, to let go, let, let go of what arises. You don't let go, it's a fact that you don't touch it that is letting go. You don't, uh, don't get engaged with your mind and you allow it to let go of many things. So you can use a meditation object, maybe for some of you it might be the breath, for others it might be the sound of silence that Ajahn Sumedho has taught us for many years. For some others in Thailand you use often the mantra, little mantra like Budo. It's just a way of simplifying our field of attention and that works with some people. Other people sometimes it's just allowing the mind to be open in the present also is a way of bringing, bringing calm and 
peacefulness in the mind, in the heart. Just the mind is open. It doesn't have an object. The object is just the present moment here and now. Staying with the here and now. Staying with the here and now means that you're aware of that which pulls you away from the here and now, of course. So you notice every time that your mind is moving out of the quality of present awareness, you notice not something to make you feel bad, but just you get to know your mind, that's all. You get to know the nature of the mind, the restlessness of the mind. The grumpiness of the mind. the happiness of the mind. So now you can continue your practice and you can, if you're ready, you can really look how the, at the, you know, how things are changing, impermanent changing and anicca, how you experience that you witness through awareness are unsatisfactory and how they are really none of the things that you think, feel, touch and so on, experience are yours. You can't, don't have much control about, your, about what you experience. The only control you have is to be very clear through awareness of what's going on. When you are very clear, then you see Anicca Dukkha Anatta very clearly. So you continue like that until the end of the time.
notice when your mind is involved with what is going on. If you have been absorbed into a story, a situation, a memory or anticipating the future, notice the feeling of being absorbed into something. And then if, as you're aware, suddenly a space appears in your mind that shows you the difference between looking at something with awareness and getting absorbed into whatever you're absorbed into.
Now you can begin to open your eyes gently and to stay with the body, stay with the awareness of the body feelings. You can move, uh, stretch your legs, stretch your back, relax your head. And we don't have very long together, so I was thinking that perhaps <clears throat> maybe uh, uh, if you have any questions, I was planning to have maybe a little reflection on practice, but we can also, if there is questions coming uh, that are really um, of interest for you, and often it's also of interest for other people, please write it down on the chat or say it to me, loud enough that I can hear. I'll just... Don't be shy. shy. Ajahn, uh, it's Will. Hi. Um, good evening, everyone. Ho hopefully you can hear me okay. Uh, um, I don't so hear, I don't hear what you say so clearly. It's okay, I'll, I'll write it in the chat, that's fine. That's easier sometimes. Anybody else? I mean, I'll respond to the person who just uh, talked to me. Yeah, no. But if you have a loud voice, loudish, you can... Um... As I said, don't be shy, don't be embarrassed, don't be too English. <laughs> you know what I mean, being French, you know, we're kind of straightforward. <laughs> British people tend to be always kind sort of shy to. So where is the question that's supposed to be written on the chat? Hello. Gone. I want to say, Ajahn, how happy I am to see you. It's Carola. Oh, Carola. Yes, me too. How is your <laughs> husband? <laughs> He's well. He's quite tired, so he didn't join us today. Okay, great. But, uh, thank you for being here. <laughs> Still standing. <laughs> and do you have any questions? I'm quite talkative, you know, so I can talk easily, but I thought you might want to... Um... Ah, here we are. Ah, people are... Good evening, Ajahn. My question was about intention. I noticed it seemed to precede all my experience, even my sense of self, which exists. I have no control over it. Over it. Does this make sense? Does this mean our choice is how we respond to experience rather than control our intention. Oh, <laughs> of course you have control of your intention. <laughs> we all be in prison if we, know, <laughs> if we don't have control of our intention, don't we? <laughs> How many thoughts of terrible thing we could do when you get really angry with saying with people? <laughs> How many things that go cr crazy thing cross our mind? You know, of course you can change your intention. This is what you're learning in Buddhism. You see, you 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 have skillful intention and unskillful intention. Maybe sometimes we don't even know how to make the difference. You know. So you learn, you learn little by little. It's a process of gradually, gradually getting familiar with what having a mind is all about. <laughs> For many years, I don't know about you, I mean, I, I had a mind like all of you, but I never thought I had a mind. I just was like, I didn't know that big mind was me, was controlling me. Make me suffer, make me happy, make me absolutely 
you know, ecstatic, maybe despairing and so on. You know, I did not know I had a mind that I could actually train, training your mind. Now, this kind of level of interest doesn't come when you're still reacting and rebelling and wanting things the way you want and don't want to listen to anybody. <laughs> Does that remind you somebody? <laughs> right? At some point, you begin to notice there is an entity there that you thought were you, that you could control, you could do anything you wanted with. Um, you know, so you begin to see that, as you say, you, you notice, doesn't this make sense? Does this mean our choice is how we respond to experience rather than control intention? You know, intention, remember, it's just a word. Intention is a word. It's a thought. Right? Intention is thinking. So can you, can you control your thoughts? Of course you can control your thought, you know that. If you want to smack somebody on the face because they irritates you, you can control it and say, maybe I should do that. It might not be a good result. I might be really more careful. Otherwise I might be discover who the person I'm going to smack is going to be really heavy for the next year. So of course you can control. That's what the Buddha is talking about. It's not a control out of fear and it's not a control of, out of desire to get rid of. It's not a control out of wanting more things. It's a control of knowing the nature of your thoughts. Do you understand? You can know, you, can, you, have, a, you have a door that takes you to the knowledge of the nature of your mind. So you don't control through aversion, you don't control through, you know, you can control through aversion. Most of them do that all the time. <laughs> you have averse, you get away from it, you like it, you more and more. Isn't it true? Alison. Because uh, <laughs> you didn't think I was watching you, did you? <laughs> of course I was watching you. You're on the list of the top of people's faces and I can watch very well. <laughs> so, yes, you can. But remember, the teaching is just, it's just made of words. It's not reality, is it? When you say anger, is that the reality of anger? Of course not. You punch somebody, then you may wonder, did I punch because I was angry or did I punch because I love that person so much I needed to punch her or him? Mostly is aversion and anger, isn't it? So you all know what anger is when you get incredibly annoyed with somebody or you get so much resistance towards what somebody else is saying because you think they are so stupid. How many people in your life are stupid to, to remain polite? So, you know, Buddhist teaching is all about that to help us to understand how we can navigate through life without having to repress, without having to, you know, confront in a kind of brutal way life, ourself, our life, the life with others. How can we can actually uh, understand what's happening in our life through understanding. Yeah. Of course your intention precedes all your experiences because it's thoughts that makes you do things. Yeah, it's when you think, you think, you start having a little project. But also thoughts doesn't, don't come. And even if I don't think, thoughts come. Do you understand? You notice that in your meditation, you put, maybe you are completely intent on having a mind that let go, as Ajahn Sundara said, a mind that really drop everything. And what happened? You get a, a truckload of agitation, agitated mind state and thought, don't you? You really promised yourself that this time you'll be really good. You're going to drop everything, you're going to that. And what happened? Do you see you can control your mind? You thought your mind was yours, wasn't it? Of course not. It continued to think. It doesn't need you to think. It doesn't need you to speak either. 
So be careful. Intention is just another word. So the intention in the Buddhist teaching, you have three aspects on the Noble Eightfold Path. You have a Pali word, which is Samma Sankapa. That's right intention, right thought. Okay? So it's right thought to have three aspects. The first aspect is renunciation or abandonment. You could say letting go. You can use different words, but really renunciation, nikamma. I think it's nikamma. And then the, the second is actually uh, non ill will, not hurting somebody. And the other one is ahimsa or non-violence, physical violence. Two are part of the compassion world, kindness, loving kindness, right? Non-ill will, non-harmful, non-harming. Non, um, non yeah. So this is a, these are the intention or that the, the Buddha is encouraging us to cultivate and to remember, especially in time when things are difficult, because they become habits. The more you use intention in a certain way, what happens if you have negative, harmful intention? They become a habit. They don't go away so easily after you've said something a number of times. You, you create a furrow where things keep going back the same in the same furrow, the habit of being negative or being critical or being, you know, not really appreciating people, yourself, life. It's just, you know, it's like a field. You have a, a field filled with furrow of negativity, critical mind, anxiety, worry, etc. What do you want? Beautiful flowers in your field? Or just a heap of molding a misery. <laughs> a heap of things that you regret, a heap of things that you feel is not really useful in the end because unskillful things make the mind miserable. But I know from experience that through habits, as we were just talking about this recently, you know. A habit sounds much more comfortable than something that's going to free you from an unskillful mind state. It's amazing. It's normal. It's normal. Look how difficult to stop smoking. Look how difficult to stop drinking. Look at how difficult to be sexually abusive. Look how difficult it is to harm other people, to stop harming yourself, harming others. This is just habits. And the Buddha is saying there is a possibility of having, you don't have to be an arahant before you get to a happy mind. You just begin to let go of habits that are actually unhealthy, unhelpful, whose result is unhealthy and unhelpful. And basically it's a lose-lose situation. And don't worry, if I smile, it's not because I find this funny. It's because I remember what it's like. <laughs> so please do not dilly-dally too much on looking at your unskillful habits and with love and compassion, making sure that these habits are not sustained through heedlessness, mindlessness, through forgetting, through being blinded to your action and speech and so on, you know. Okay, is that enough? Yes, thank you, Ajahn. Thank you very much. Okay. Very Second is, dear Ajahn, you mentioned intention. You were explaining the precept. Oh, okay. Could you say some more about the importance of intention and how it differs from planning? That's very good. I'm glad because it's a topic actually, um, you know, I wanted to talk about you know, about the, the, how to use a precept in an intelligent way, rather than, you know, 
uh, a Boy Scout. Not that I have anything against Boy Scouts, but you don't have to believe what people are saying. Even the precepts you have, the Buddha is always encouraging us to have a proactive response to the teaching and think for ourselves and question what he's talking about and check it out and experiment whether what he's talking about is true or not, is worthwhile or not. Whether That's how you grow in confidence in Buddhism, not through blind faith. You grow in confidence because you notice that when you do this, you get a good result. When you do that, you get an unhappy result. That's your confidence begin to really grow like this. Through experimentation, through experience, through being patient and willing to make mistakes, to go wrong, to get it wrong, to start again, to get it wrong, to start again. Like Ajahn Chah said, the practice is, you know, 70% of the time we don't get it right. And the rest of the time, we have at least some good results in our practice. But the good results often come from being mindful of when you don't get it right. Because that's really a learning. When you don't get it right, you you have this in front of you. You don't have to read books. You don't have to believe somebody. You, you realize, no, that's not the right way to go. And then maybe you're willing to change or you're willing to transform yourself. But, you know, habits are pretty heavy sometimes. Now, I don't want any comparison. Somebody is telling me, Will framed the question better than I did. This is rubbish. No, I don't believe that. <laughs> Every question is, you know, framed. Now, this is a judgment, you see. I understood perfectly the first question of Will. And I understood perfectly the second question of somebody else. I won't say the name in case you want to remain anonymous. <laughs> no, in fact, it went to the precept. So the precept, let me come to the precept before it's too late. So that's a very important question, very important subject for me. I spent many years, last years, you know, many years to explain that the precepts they are not just a set of words that you repeat, you know, every Sunday or Saturday or Mondays. Okay. They are, remember, those precepts are a set of thoughts, aren't they? I undertake the precept to refrain from destroying living being. That's all. It's a set of thoughts. What are these thoughts saying? Are saying, I won't harm anybody. I won't kill anybody. But you're part of the anybody, by the way, just in case you forgot yourself. Did you hear me? That's very important. Yeah? How we can forget ourselves. We can, we're, going, we're going to do everything we can for the people that live on the other side of the planet. We're going to send money, pullovers, whatever, umbrellas. Money, you know, all that kind of thing, but we forget ourselves. We don't, you know, we can spend many, you know, have many intention to act generously towards others and healthily towards others, but we tend to forget ourselves. And yet we're just another human being on this planet amongst, I don't know how many millions, billion, billions human beings there are on planet Earth right now. We're just one of them, you just happen to live with it. It's not fun, is it? How many of us would have to be would like to be somebody different? Look, already, just somebody just wrote to me. He framed the question better than I did. Oh, ridiculous. <laughs> so when you take those precepts, they are not there to believe blindly, to be believed blindly. They are there to stir up in your mind, in your consciousness, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, a little bit of work of reflection, of reflecting. What does that mean? To me, when I started reflecting, when I was on the first week at Chittas, you know, we were taking the precept, 
I'm a, I like to reflect on things. I'm a bit of a, you know, I like to question and reflect because I, I've seen the, the, the usefulness of a mind that open to the space of the unknown and really reflect, which means you don't have to start creating another straightforward answer. You just wait for maybe your view to change on things. Do you understand? You're opening the mind, you're creating a bigger space, like a bigger, a bigger sky, and more things can come in to help you. How about that? So remember, your mind is very rich, full of things, full of wonderful things. I see Nikki's dog behind her. <laughs> I love dogs. <laughs> he's, he's stealing my show, you see. <laughs> Wiggling his, his, his backside. <laughs> anyway, to go back to the precepts, use those five precepts as a profound subject of reflection for your daily life. Not harming. I was saying to you the first week or the first few weeks at Chitters, it didn't take me very long to realize that I wanted to be kind to many, many people, many things, many aspects of my life. But suddenly the question popped up in my mind. Am I, what kind of feeling do I have about myself? Critical. Any more feeling? Negativity. Any more feelings? You don't like yourself. Little by little, I began to pile up a list of things that I felt about me, which was not particularly loving and caring. I was never as good as a person that I felt I should be. Do you understand? So we, we need to shake off all these kind of uh, habits. So you don't kill yourself, but you don't kill your feeling. You don't, you don't kill your perception. You don't kill your thoughts because they're not, you know, under the radar of what you approve and disapprove. You don't need to do anything. Just have this intention to do good, refrain from doing evil and purify your heart. These are the teachings of all the Buddhas. This is one of the teachings you find in one of the first, the first stanzas the Buddha gave to a group of monks. Was, you know, ended as do good, refrain from doing evil and purify your heart. The other precepts are based on that. You understand? The precepts are, are, have a far-reaching consequences on us. You know? If you really develop them, cultivate them, make mistakes, do I get it wrong? You know, want to forget about them for a few weeks and come back later on. That's all it needs, a, a kind of interest. Yeah? Kind of interest. It's a heartfelt experience, in other words. You don't have to think about these things. What do you feel when you're kind and caring? What do you feel when you don't, you're not too nosy about what other people's life are about? You don't go to your partner and look at her or hear his you know, computer or his uh, telephone and so on. Yeah? You don't try to take things that are not given to you. So the third one is a good one, the sexuality, right? Sexuality, as Adrian Sumedo has told us, you know, taught us for many years, you know, it's a natural thing. There's nothing wrong with this. having sexual energy. It's a natural thing. That's how planet Earth continue to have humans. <laughs> Poor planet. If we were was monks and nuns, there wouldn't be many humans. That people used to say that, you know, wow, if everybody is monks and nuns, you know, will there be any anybody anymore at some point? <laughs> I, just, I think it was that Chan Sumedho who say, it's like, it's like asking, if everybody, if everybody was a butcher, there wouldn't be any other job along, you know, as 
you know, as likely as that. Imagine the whole planet filled up with butcher. <laughs> so of course, monks and nuns, you know. So just to go back to the third precepts, be kind to yourself, be tolerant, be accepting of your nature. And notice, again, the habit that builds up a sense of self-respect, habits that build up a sense of worthiness in yourself, that makes you act, uh, sort of like being with yourself. You feel good about yourself. You, 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 you are, it's like yourself, this mind and body is like a home, isn't it? Are you happy in that home? Do you take care of that home? You feed well, do you respect well, do you take care of it well and so on. Just like the mind needs that kind of care too. So, you know, when you, you have the, the fourth precept about not lying, which has also, you know, not um, speaking in anger or not uh, backbiting, you know, talking about people behind their back, criticizing them, destroying their reputation. You know, that's not good. We, we don't, we're not asked to be perfect and I just have wonderful thing to say about everybody on the planet. We just begin to see that the karma of speaking badly about others not to everybody, sometimes we have good friends, we can speak with them, we trust them, we have confidence in their capacity to keep secret, to keep, you know, to not spread all your thing you tell them to everybody. It's good to have a friends, good friends you can trust when you want to maybe confide things that are difficult to talk about with other people. But generally, be careful with your speech or spend a lot of time speaking, you know, ex exhausting your energy, just chatting, chatting, chatting about nothing. Gossiping, backbiting and so on. Uh, so before I continue, I just had another Somebody sent me a little comment on the precepts. So it's on, we are still on the same subject. I'm delighted. That's a, pre, that's a topic I wanted to talk about, but I said, no, maybe they want something more dense or more reflective, a talk or so, you know. But then you brought me straight back to what I wanted to talk about. So this one is, I have found that since taking the precept and practicing them often, I notice straight away if I break one. I'm more mindful of them daily. The precept not to lie, I find difficult. As having children, sometimes you have to tell a little untruth to keep the peace. <laughs> as long as my intention behind the lie are good, I have still kept the precept. Have I still kept the precept from my, um, I won't tell this one. Uh, okay. Um, yeah, it's a difficult one, you know, it's a very difficult one to really um, have a straight black and white response to that. You may find a way of doing it without having to shift it into a lie, do you understand? There may be a way, if you feel a bit anxious about that, or if you feel uncomfortable about saying a little you know, what you call that? White lies, we call them, is that it? White lies, lies that are not too severe. Is that it? Nikki, yeah? So, um, I don't know, I've never had children myself. Um, I think sometimes one is, when you wouldn't call, call it maybe a lie, but more like you are deforming something, you know, it's like a deformation of what you wanted to say.
And as you see, as long as your intention, but you have to be careful because we can have wonderful intention and go straight into killing somebody to make somebody else happy. Remember that? <laughs> so don't trust your intention too much in that respect. If it was me, I will find a way to be happy with that. And for me to be happy with that, I will, you know, scratch my mind to find out if there is a way to do that without having to say something that's a lie that you feel will be a lie. So I would encourage you to find ways which are, I don't have that ready for you now. But I think it's always good to not, you know, be, I have a question about that. I have a sense of uh, ill at ease to say a lie, you know, to say something that's not true. Because your children grow up, you know, and uh, if you say one lie, maybe you say another lie another time and so on, you know, it can actually just become more of a habit again. So be creative. That's my, that's my uh, encouragement, my advice. Be creative and find a way to say something to your children which does not lie, but still give you peace of mind. And don't talk to them as if they were your, you know, your psychotherapist or your old friend. You know, children don't want to be your therapist. Remember that. <laughs> I mean, some parents really I've seen want to take the children, make them think that they are adult, you know, but in this at all, I find that really bad. You know. So instead of maybe if you don't lie, maybe you get on and on and on about the reason why and this and that and because that da 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 da. That's not what the child wants to, you know. You can say for now. I will explain to you another time. Or you don't need to, you know. Yeah, I think one has to be creative. And next time I see you, I see this lady, you will tell me what you have discovered to deal with your situation. But it's not a, a big lie what you're doing, you know, it's not something, you're not going to hell for that, I don't think. <laughs> As you say, it has a, in a way, it's embedded, it's mixed with the intention to uh, do some, maybe something you need to do. Maybe, you know, you say, uh, to keep the peace maybe i don't know if the peace is maybe you're doing something very useful for somebody else or you're being something very very necessary and you know and you don't know what to say to for them to stop doing what they are doing your kids you know but kids you know like being creative and they, you can use your own creative mind to discover what you can do say to them okay so we passed eight o'clock by one minute, but if there's another question, please say it now. Otherwise, you have to say goodbye. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, is that not? Is that only key still your dog? Oh. <laughs> I can see it moving. He's got his tails going. <laughs> he's obviously happy. I don't know what's going on, but he's celebrating something. I'm not quite sure. Huh? Dogs usually don't wave their tails unless they are happy. That's, I think, my experience. <laughs> so. Well, maybe we can do the closing, uh, closing uh, passage, closing homage. Yeah. So, one do. Can you tell us a closing homage? I can't remember. It's at the end of the evening chanting. Page 28 and 29. Okay. 
we, yeah, we took the, the end. It's a, both of them are the same morning and evening. Okay, so. <clears throat> Sama Sambudho Bhagavan Budham Bhagavan Tama Bhivate Mi Sawakato Bhagavata Dhammo Dhammam Namasami Supati Pano Bhagavato Sawaka Sango Sangha Namami So I wish you well. I'm happy to stay for five, ten minutes extra if somebody wants to talk about something and everybody else please leave at your convenience.